In this video, we will go over the IPR functionality in the render view. Now the IPR stands for Interactive Photorealistic Renderer. And that is just a cool way of saying the render view will update as you make changes to your scene. So it'll update automatically. Let's start a render with the render view. We'll see what we have in the scene. We have a sphere and a ground plane, and they both have the default shaders on them. So let's fix that. We'll give the sphere a new thong. And we'll give the ground plane a new Lambert. And with the ground plane, I'm just gonna change the color. We'll just leave it like this. And let's do a render. So we see we have a reflective ball and the ground plane, which is orange. So what the IPR will do, any change we make on the materials, the textures, lighting, or camera, any kind of change in our scene will be automatically updated in this render view. So let's get the IPR started. The IPR is this button right here. It's that clapboard that says IPR in it. We have one here in the render view, and we have one up on top um, next to the other render settings in the render view. In order to get started, let's click the IPR button, and you see that our render view gets cleared out. Everything disappears. We see wireframe, and at the bottom it says select a region to begin tuning. So what they want you to do is draw a box around the area that you want the IPR to update. Let's drag a box around our sphere. And here we see the IPR renders what's inside that box that we drew out. Let's select our sphere. And let's go up to our attribute editor and make some changes in our shader. So let's change the color to green. And as soon as we do, it updates. Let's adjust the transparency. And it updates automatically. Let's change the um, specular highlight. And that gets updated. So you can see that the IPR is a great way to visualize your changes that you're making in either your shaders, in your camera, or in your lighting, or anything, and it updates automatically. I can show you by rotating the camera a little bit. And you see the camera motion um, gets updated as well. We do have um, some buttons up here that correspond to the IPR. If you need to pause the IPR, you can click the pause button. And now any changes that get made will not be reflected in the IPR until I unpause. So let's unpause this. And now my changes are updated. If you would like to stop the IPR, you can hit this stop button. And now we'll not re-render the IPR. So we can make changes. And it does not update that. So we can go in and just say, you know, re-render this render view. And it'll re-render the whole file. Let's change the color again to purple. Now, if we want to just re-render that section that we had set up for our IPR with the render region, you can use this button, and this will render just this area. To show what it is doing, I'm going to select the ground plane, and I'm gonna change the color on that, just so we can see the difference exactly where it's rendering. And we'll change this to green. Now let's hit this button, and you'll see it'll just render inside the box that we drew for our IPR. 
So even though we shut the IPR off, we still have that render uh, region set up in this render view. So using the IPR, you can get a very quick responses to changes you're making to your shaders, to your textures, to your lights, to your camera positions, and it's a good fast way of getting feedback. And I highly recommend you trying to use the IPR when making adjustments to these settings.